can't follow that. Lord. <laughs> A year ago, I sold my house and everything in it. I sold my sofa, I sold the rugs, I sold my dining table, I sold dishes, I sold everything in my house. I even, and I hesitate to say this, in a room full of writers, I got rid of most all of my books, hundreds of them, maybe even a thousand books. Everything that I kept fit into this small box. I had um, some family photos that I saved. I had my grandfather's stamp collection that meant something to me. And I had this. You can't, from where you're sitting, really see what this is. So I'll tell you, it is this crudely bound collection of short stories. You flip through, you'll see photocopied Kinko special bound collection of short stories that served as a textbook for a class that I had 20 years ago. The class was English 225. It was called Writing of Fiction, Instructor Michael Parker. Now this was around the time this class, um, when his second book I think had come out, The Geographical Cure, his first had been Hello Down There, and this was a, just maybe two years after that. And Michael Parker was a rock star at UNCG, oh my God, especially in the English department where I was a student. Everybody wanted to take his classes, including me. I desperately wanted to take one of Michael Parker's classes. And so I tried to get in them, but they were so popular, they filled up really, really quick. I was at UNCG for four years, that's not true, five years I was there for a while. <laughs> kept trying to take classes and finally my very last year there I managed to get a slot in Michael Parker's um, class English 225 writing of fiction. Well the first day rather than I guess send us to the bookstore to load our arms up with all sorts of books that really none of us could afford especially me a student from rural Randolph County we got this binder instead, this binder that I just showed you full of this, these story, these curated collection of short stories that Michael Parker had thoughtfully put together for us, his students, these stories that he believed we should read and we should know about. Well, I loved this. Oh my gosh, clearly I've carried this around with me for 20 years. I loved this. This just curated collection of stories. It was just amazing and I devoured everything in here. I just read them and we got to class and we deconstructed these stories. We just, we broke them down and talked about why they worked and why they were amazing and just the bones of the stories. I didn't realize at the time that the class in doing that, we really could have called it the making of an editor class, but that's what we were doing. Well, we wrote stuff too. It was a writing of fiction class, and so we also wrote things that we wrote, and I liked that too. That was fun um, until Michael Parker dropped this bombshell on us that we were now going to be required to read out loud everything that we wrote from here on out. I think he told us that after you could actually drop a class. <laughs> oh, no, this was no good. This was no good. We were going to be reading out loud stuff we had written. What? Oh, my God. I was terrified of that. I was what you might call a, a quiet introvert, also known as every English major in the history of every college ever, anywhere, always. <laughs> it was very quiet. I didn't talk all that much. We were going to be reading our stories out loud. Ah, oh, what was the point of that? That was crazy. What was the point? Why were we doing that? Well, there was a point, and Michael Parker knew it, 
and he wanted to make sure that we knew it too. So I bucked up and I did it and I wrote my stories and I brought them into class and I would stand up and I would read out loud for everybody to hear whatever I had written. And Michael Parker never made us feel like what we had said out loud was wrong or bad or anything like that. And we listened to everybody else read their stories out loud too. And you know what, none of us died. <laughs> My dad was a photographer, and I always heard him say that the key element of a good photograph is lighting. Well, I learned from that class that the key to good writing is voice. I never, ever would have discovered that on my own had I not been required to give voice to my own words. I graduated a couple of years after that. <laughs> I took a job at Our State Magazine. This was 18 years ago. Um, I started at the bottom, I mean the bottom. I was hired to answer the telephones in the proverbial basement. It was every bit as glamorous as that sounds. And I tried to learn as much as I could while I was there. I took on a lot of responsibilities and I did all sorts of things. And, I kind of moved up on the editorial ladder after a little while, and after about a year or two there, I got promoted to an associate editor position, which was wildly exciting because an associate editor spot meant that, oh my God, I could now make assignments, and I could plan issues. I could think about what we wanted to produce. And so the editor at the time asked me, okay, what do you want to do with this big millennium issue that we're about to come out with? This was 1999 and January 2000, advent of a new millennium, and we were going to do something really special. Well, I didn't have to think about that for very long. I said, oh, I know the answer. I want to make this. I want to make this. I want us to create this collection of stories that we think have literary merit that we also believe our readers should read. So that's what I did, and I worked to create my very first assignment list. I came up with 25 names of writers that I hoped would contribute to really the first ever literary edition of Our State Magazine, and Michael Parker was the very first name on my list. I had other names too, Bland Simpson, Philip Girard, James Applewhite, Fred Chapel, all these amazing writers. We really could have called this issue just Elizabeth's favorite writers. We could rename the magazine that. I sent these assignment letters out. It was my first assignment sheet ever. I'd never done anything like this. I didn't know if anybody would write for us, but everybody said okay, including Michael Parker, and I cannot tell you how excited I was about that. We didn't really use email, I don't think. I've been trying to recall that. I don't think we had email. And so every day in the weeks leading up to when his story was due, I would, sh I would go to the mail, but to check the mail, I'm checking the mail. Is his story here? Is the manuscript here yet? Has it come? Has it come in the mail? Oh my God, what is he gonna write about and what is this gonna be? And I was so, unbelievably excited. I cannot even tell you to get this piece in the mail. And then one day it comes and it's in a brown envelope and I'll go running through the office. It's here. Oh my God, Michael Parker's story is here. And I rip it open and I parade it around the office. I pull the manuscript out like I have just won something from the publisher's clearinghouse and I hold it up. And do you know what I did when I got it? I read it out loud. <laughs> I read it out loud, his words coming out of my mouth as if I had written them, which of course I had not, oh my God. And they were amazing and I could hear the rhythm and the cadence and the sound and the voice, which is exactly what he had taught us how to do. And I could hear it and it was, oh my God, it was amazing, this story. It was Michael's first 
piece for our state magazine, I'm pretty sure, in 2000, well this was 1999, and I'm so excited that I got to work with this incredible, amazing story, and I'm reading it, and I'm reading it out loud in my whole office, and everybody's watching me read it, and it's just brilliant, and it's, it's spectacular, and oh my word, oh my gosh, I felt like all of a sudden, everything in my world had just looped around, and would you believe, this is the part of the story you will not believe, his piece was about the devil's tramping ground in Chatham County, which if you don't know is this sort of mythic place where it's this bare, open, round spot. And his story, as I'm reading it out loud, the words coming out of his mouth was titled, The Perfect Circle. The Perfect Circle. Oh my gosh, The Perfect Circle indeed. I've been editor-in-chief now for six years, and every single month I get to make this, this, this amazing collection of curated stories that go out to all these readers. And every month I, too, get to contribute something to the magazine. I write a column of my own. I've written 72 of them now. And every month, I read every single one of them out loud. Next month, I celebrate 18 years at a job that I love more than I could ever tell you. And tonight, I get to say thank you to my teacher and now my friend who taught me 20 years ago how to have a voice. Thank you, Michael Parker. <laughs>